Hi there, I'm Adam Lovelady with Toyota Motor North America, and I'm here to talk to you about PCS, the pre-collision system that's now standard on almost every one of our Toyota models. You may have already seen some great content from us here at Toyota that explains PCS, but I'd like to take a few minutes to walk you through what you may actually experience from behind the wheel. As you may know, the pre-collision system with automatic emergency braking is just one part of our Toyota Safety Sense suite of advanced active safety technologies. The pre-collision system constantly monitors the road ahead and is on the lookout for a potential frontal collision. And it's designed to help mitigate or hopefully prevent frontal collisions with certain obstacles. All of our TSS pre-collision systems can detect a vehicle ahead. Many of them can detect a pedestrian ahead, while the newest TSS 2.0 version can even detect a bicycle. That said, the conditions in which the system works may vary. Please refer to toyota.com or your owner's manual for exact information on your model. Now the pre-collision system operation can be divided into three potential scenarios, depending on the severity of the risk as calculated by the system. Let's take a look at the first one. In scenario one, let's say you're driving down the road and PCS spots an obstacle that is detectable to the system. In this example, it's a vehicle that's suddenly stopped ahead in traffic. If the system then determines the possibility of a frontal collision is high, it will warn you with an audible alert, like that. And it will display a brake message on the multi-information display. Now if you immediately react to the warnings and brake, the PCS warning will stop. But what if you're a bit slow to react to the PCS warnings? Well that's our second scenario, let's take a look. So in scenario two, imagine that you're driving down the same road and PCS again identifies a vehicle that has suddenly stopped ahead in traffic. Like before, when the system then calculates a high possibility of a collision with the stopped vehicle ahead, it will begin to warn you with an audible alert and brake message on the multi-information display. If the system calculates the risk of collision is increasing, and you haven't already responded to the audible and visual alerts, it is designed to then prime the brakes for you. This is what we call our brake assist system. During the second phase, when you do respond to the warning alerts and apply the brakes, the system is designed to provide additional braking force regardless of how hard you actually depress the brake pedal. This added braking force can be a bit of a surprise if you're not expecting it, but the alternative could be much worse. Okay, so what happens if you don't respond to the warnings at all? Well, that's our third scenario when the pre-collision system applies the brakes on its own. Let's take a look at that scenario. So again, let's say you're driving down that same road and PCS has determined that the likelihood of a collision with that suddenly stopped vehicle ahead is high and you didn't respond to the audio and visual alerts. And so, like we learned, the vehicle has prepared the brake assist but you still didn't respond to the alerts as they continued to go off. Now, if PCS determines that the possibility of a frontal collision is imminent, it will enter its third phase and activate the automatic emergency braking function. At this point, the vehicle is designed to automatically apply the brakes on its own to slow the vehicle. To be clear, this is not the driver applying the brakes, it's the pre-collision system. During this third scenario, the brake pedal is not depressed by the driver. If the vehicle is able to come to a complete stop, it will then hold the brakes for approximately two seconds, allowing you to reorient yourself and assess the situation. So those are the three stages of PCS operation. First, it tries to alert you, then it primes brake assist, and then finally, if needed, it could activate automatic emergency braking. Needless to say, this can all occur quite quickly, depending on the circumstances. But for the sake of this video, we've broken it down step by step to help you understand the PCS process. A safety system like this can go a long way in helping make the roads safer for both you and drivers around you. But PCS is not an autonomous driving feature, it's an active driver support system. It should not be relied upon for normal braking operation. While the effectiveness of this function can obviously vary depending on the vehicle, the vehicle's current speed, and its surrounding conditions, it can be very helpful in slowing the vehicle enough to hopefully prevent a potential collision entirely, or at least mitigate the severity of the collision. It doesn't work in every situation. Like if a vehicle crosses in front of you at an intersection, or if snow or rain are interfering with the sensors. Ultimately, drivers are responsible for their own safe driving. 
Another important note is that PCS defaults to the driver's judgment. If PCS thinks that the driver is trying to avoid a potential collision by swerving or by accelerating to get out of the way, PCS will stop functioning. Refer to Toyota.com or your owner's manual for more information about PCS and its limitations. Thanks for watching this video and be sure to look for more great videos like this from us here at Toyota.